Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with our series on the Antonov 225 Miria, and we're going to be taking a look at takeoff, climb, as well as uh, kind of getting the initial sets of navigation started. Let's go. So first things first, uh, we got this thing started up. Now the engine's running smoothly, our APUs are spooled out, everything's ready to go. So one of the first things I like to do in this aircraft is I like to start to calculate exactly what my takeoff is going to entail. Now, a lot of people, uh, when they take off, it's just a matter of just kind of point at the runway, give it full power, and cross your fingers that you're going to get safely down the runway. Uh, the problem with this aircraft, though, is the weight of the aircraft has a massive impact on how safely you're going to get to the aircraft into the air. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, when I was originally testing it, I'd make the foolish mistake of uh, not really taking my time to check my weights and just kind of YOLOing down the runway kind of a thing and hoping everything will come out okay. Obviously, uh, we can do that, but um, uh, we have to be kind of careful. As a general rule with this aircraft, if you're doing any sort of takeoff, I highly recommend that you take off with flaps 25. You know, that seems like it's a little extreme for a lot of aircraft uh, that you probably have flown, especially regular airliners where you could do flaps 5 and you're good to go. But remember, just the scale of this thing is extreme. And although we do have six of those progress engines, that doesn't necessarily mean where we're going to go ripping around here. So next what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing taxing. Um, this is a little involved, and I'll show you why in a second. First things first, uh, you want to double check that underground you do not have the chocks set. Uh, if you do, it's going to surprise you a little bit when you go to get this thing taxing. The trick to this is to remember, just like a 747, that the wheel is directly behind you. It's actually right over here, right behind us. So when you go over the grass, for example, you're actually just the nose is going over the grass. So this is a very tricky taxi situation because you can see that most of my wing is going to spend time off the runway here. So if I go to the left here, you can see that I'm basically going to be a scenario where it's like, uh, if you go to the right, it's going to be the other way as well. All right, so let's get this thing going. Uh, one thing I like to do is I like to kind of sneak up here. We've got our lighting panel. This is a good time to go ahead and get us all kind of set up. Uh, of course, we could have turned these on a little sooner if we wanted. It doesn't really matter. I love how you have the multiple position here. We also, of course, have the landing and kind of those lights. We have these big things called fuselage lights. Uh, kind of the nice thing there is when you hit that, it lights this entire thing up like a big tree. It'll kind of let everybody know that, hey, I'm about to get rolling. So I'm going to release my parking brake. Uh, normally, if you have a two, uh, split thruster, this is a great time to go ahead and push it. Uh, for whatever reason, when I push my right throttle, I get a little bit of the right throttle, which isn't too, too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jam this thing to the left, and you'd be amazed how easy this thing is to rotate. Now, if for some reason your aircraft is not rotating, that probably means that you accidentally hit one of these two switches here, which turns the steering on and off. So for me, I'm going to leave the steering on. Uh, interesting detail with this particular Eastern aircraft is that the steering is not something I have to shut off to put the wheels up. So that's actually kind of a neat trick. So remember, you are gigantic. Gigantic. So uh, take your time to carefully kind of line up here and then uh, roll. Remember, you've got a lot more inertia than you think you do. All right, we're going to kind of get rolling here. Uh, while we're going to get rolling, we're going to get some of my initial values kind of pre-programmed here. This is, again, we'll do a detailed thing all dedicated to the autopilot AFS another day. I'm just going to do this just for now. We're going to do 5,000. Of course, uh, we're going to go up at uh, 5 meters a second. We'll probably do, uh, we'll do about 11 meters per second. Uh, we'll do 6 or 7 meters a second. That's plenty. So what I'm doing now is, uh, remember, because the airplane is behind you, we have to go out almost at the line and then you're going to kick the rudder and you're going to follow the line very carefully and remember that the wheel is behind you so as you take these turns always go a little wider than you think you need but be very very mindful and careful of everything that is around you so we're going to start slowly rolling our way down the runway here my flaps are set so we'll do our landing lights and everything like that good time to go ahead and get all your approach speeds and all your different things for the computer's programs now one of the things that'll surprise a lot of folks or i guess it wouldn't surprise anybody really if you know to expect it are going to be your speeds on this one right now you can see our approach speed is at 185. Very typical for Eastern style aircraft is that the approach or the auto throttle really isn't for holding your speed like you think of it when you're flying like a 737 or a 747. It's really for the purposes of approach, less so than it is just sort of hanging out this throttle. A lot of times the auto throttle system is basically there to um, help you land, not there to help fly when you're cruising around. Fortunately or fortunately, you know, I'm a good old Mary Connor here, so I'm, I'm kind of dumb and I try to use it for everything. So I'm just kind of keep on rolling down the runway here. We'll get that speed. I'm just looking it up right now real fast. Just double checking to make sure I'm not missing anything. After starting, I'm going to calculate my DME. The timer's all set. Yeah, we're supposed to leave it a minute before shutting it down. There's a bunch of little uh, procedures here that you want to kind of be mindful of that. Take off. Uh, let's see here. Rotate. Uh, that's not too bad. All right. Not bad. Not bad at all. Got to kind of make my way to the runway. 
And I'm going to go ahead and pause right before we do that again. We want to go almost to the line here. I'm actually going to leave myself pointing kind of at an awkward angle here, because that way when I go to push my nose over, I have the ability to kind of sneak in. So the question here is, um, our flaps are set correctly. What speed do we lift the nose up? Well, one of the nice things that people at I&I &I did is they actually put this little bug right here to tell you what the correct speed you need to pull the nose up. And they also provide you with a handy speed to remind you when to put your flaps up, as well as the speed you can't exceed when you're cruising. So we're really looking for about that kind of a speed there, which is that 200 kilometers per hour piece, which you know, when I think about it, it seems a little low. Yeah, that's what the manual says to do. We'll do it. So everything's all set. Uh, lights are going to be on. We're going to go pop on the landing lights real quick. I'll reach above my head. I'm going to snap that on. We can go ahead and shut the fuselage lights off. Give it just a tap of power. Uh, it does not take too much to get this thing rolling. And remember too that if you're not careful here, you're going to accidentally run over that a lovely sign that it tells us we're about to come up on this runway. There we go. And again, uh, we're going to just ride, ride wide. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying here. All right, kind of sneak around the corner nice and gently. Again, uh, you have a nice uh, little nose wheel tiller there. You can see me working that thing pretty hard. I don't think this aircraft is this maneuverable in the real world. I'm just uh, kind of impressed with it, but hey, whatever works. All right, let's go ahead over to the runway. Obviously, the runway behind us is quite useless here, so we want to make sure we have plenty of room as we kind of go around this corner here. All right, got to set ourselves up here. It looks pretty good so far. It can go nice and straight. I'm going to cheat just a tiny bit here. I'm actually going to come out and uh, look at how maneuverable this plane is. There's no way this plane is this easy to steer on the ground. Oh, especially with an 18-wheeler down in the valley somewhere. Yeah, we got to come out just a little bit here. That looks pretty good right there. Yeah, man. All right. Eh, not the world's best lineup, but hey, I'm an amateur. All right. Brakes help. All right, let's do our idiot checks real quickly here. We're going to go ahead and uh, winch wipe our controls here. You can see over there on the right that we're giving everything a nice little workout just to check to make sure it works out. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply full power. That's going to be 120%. Uh, basically, just take the throttle, push it all the way forward. You could try the toga button, but it probably won't work the way that you uh, kind of expected it to. Uh, once, of course, we get ourselves up to the point where well, we're about 1,000 feet, we're going to nose over and just slowly build up some speed. Now, unfortunately for us, 1,000 feet, how do we know where the 1,000 feet is? They left us a regular one, so uh, we can actually take a look at this one. By the way, if you're wondering about units for my atmospheric pressure, this is millimeters of mercury. 760 would be at the normal 1011, if you want to think about it another way. We have another device for that purpose down here as well. Now, this, of course, my navigator would be getting everything set up now. My engine guy would be setting everything up. There's a couple of little procedures in the checklist that we'll be describing, you know, going through certain hydraulic tests and stuff like that. I'm not going to stress about that. Again, I'll try to keep it simple. So I'm going to hold down the brakes. I'm going to go ahead and smoothly apply some power here. All we're going to do is just double check to make sure everything comes up smoothly. Remember, we have six engines. It's very unlikely that all six engines are going to behave properly here. I'm just going to go around, check to make sure everything looks good. Looks good. I think everything's fine there. I'm seeing uh, no strange instrument indications. Everything works smoothly. I'm going to go ahead and push it all the way to the rest of the power. I'm going to go ahead and release the brakes. And you'll notice this thing does not jump off the line. It smoothly accelerates. If you look over on the right-hand side, if you look at that instrument right there, you can see my ground speed's coming up. It feels like that should be in knots or miles per hour, but that's kilometers an hour. So you can actually just look over on your right there and go, aha, so I have about 50 more kilometers per hour before I have to lift the nose up. We're cruising down, looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and give the nose a tug. Again, you don't have to pull very hard here. It will come up on its own. And incredibly, just like a B-52, the whole aircraft is going to slowly start making its way up. Again, this thing takes a tremendous amount of effort to try to get airborne here. There we go. We got ourselves a pretty solid crosswind, and we are airborne. Once we're up, oh, we need to go ahead and slap the landing gear handle up, and then we're going to start making our way uh, upwards here. Now, one of the things they talk about in the manual is, uh, like I said, what little we do have here. This thing is like a bus, by the way, when you're operating it. We're going to go ahead and uh, leave that power in a little bit until we can start bringing those flaps up. Again, you've got a lot of weight on this thing. So uh, when I firstly get it to this position, you can see I'm just about ready to cross that yellow line right there. we got the yellow and blue. Go ahead and bring up that first notch. Give it some time. Let it go. Oh, got a bit of a quartering crosswind there. It's pretty serious. All right, I'm gonna bring up my next notch here. Just give it time to come up. Don't try to force it. Uh, don't sit there and think you're gonna out uh, beat it with any sort of trim options here. 
Uh, do not do any of those things. Uh, this is usually a good time to go ahead and uh, neutralize the gear lever. These little things, by the way, are latches that are supposed to catch the landing gear to prevent them from being up or downed. Uh, we're not going to worry about that too much. We're going to bring up our last notch of flaps. Our last notch of flaps is good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the power down to 112. It'll be about right there. It's about 90% there. All right, looks good. 112%. There we go. Nice. That's 112. So the next question now you're probably going to ask is, all right, Chief, uh, you got us in the air. Or the flaps are retracted. You only forgot half the checklist, and we're doing pretty well so far. Um, what are we going to do as far as the climb speed goes? Well, if you're familiar with the uh, climb speeds here, I'm going to stick my head and zoom in a little bit here. You can see right now we're pushing about 450 kilometers an hour. Um, that's actually pretty darn close to 250 knots. Uh, one of the nice things about this aircraft is if you can think about the 50s, you'll probably be fine. As long as you're keeping it right around 450, uh, you'll find yourself uh, climbing at about the correct speed. Uh, what we can do, of course, is if you want to climb really quickly, you got to wait until you get to about 3,300 meters, then you can go up to 550 kilometers an hour, and you can hold that until we get to a Mach number. You can see a Mach 0.41 right now. You can actually hold that all the way until you start seeing that Mach thing start to climb a little bit. And then you can uh, usually climb at about 0.78 or 0.8 if you're really, really feeling lucky today. I'm going to go ahead and tap the trim. Uh, one of the problems they have with this uh, model is they made the trim famously sensitive it is unbelievable sensitive you tap the thing you look away and all of a sudden it's like ah what have i done it's the most twitchy thing ever um so be very careful with the trim there so now that we're in the air our landing gear lever has been neutralized everything is looking pretty smooth we can go ahead ourselves over to the automatic pilot here now i'm going to save a different video for the autopilot so i'm not going to too many details but we'll go ahead and get everything kind of working here go ahead and engage that one now you can see that we're pretty much set to go and we're just going to hit the vertical hold button there and i'll run our way to 5,000 masers so we're just going to keep on climbing until we get to that particular point uh, if we wanted to enable the automatic throttle we could at this point um i find that don't really need to. Um, it's simply a matter of deciding exactly what else I want to do with it. In this case, I'm noticing I'm getting a little fast here, so I'm actually going to adjust my vertical speed a little bit to try to get a little more angles on there. Now, what some people say is, is it possible to actually cause this thing to climb in FLC mode? The answer is yeah. That's actually what this button right here is for. Um, you want to be careful with this button, though, because it does not behave the way you normally do it, and we'll talk about that when we do the autopilot. So now that we're on our way, it would just simply be a matter of uh, floating down here, uh, dialing in some buttons and switches, uh, getting our navigation all set up, and then cruising around. But that we will save for another video. Enjoy.